Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Listen, we've been beating this thing like a dead horse, which is the issue, the ongoing scavenger hunt that the ATF is out looking for triggers. And many of you have asked about other triggers not named the rare breed FRT-15. And it's an excellent question, and I think we need to clear that up today. So, Let's spend a few minutes today and talk about what trigger is the ATF actually looking for? Okay, before we get going down the road, we're going down. Proud to announce that this video is being brought to you by Legal Heat. That's right, the nation's largest educator of concealed carry classes. Legal Heat has educated more than 200,000 individuals nationwide since they started business in 2005. For my Washington viewers, they've already educated 4,000 of you out here, and they got plans to do thousands and thousands of more. My Washington folks, you can find a class at any one of these locations right here. For those of you viewers outside the state of Washington, check them out at MyLegalHeat.com. That's MyLegalHeat.com. You're going to be able to find a class somewhere real close to your backyard. Now listen, if you find a class and you want to sign up, go ahead and use the promo code Washington Gun Law. That is Washington Gun Law, all one word, and you will receive 10% off any class you sign up for. For more information, visit them at MyLegalHeat.com. Okay, so the issue we're talking about today, we keep dissecting this into smaller and smaller pieces, is what exactly is the types of triggers that the ATF is actually out there looking for? Because the rare breed forced reset trigger is not the only trigger to use technology to try to increase the rate of fire. Um, and the ATF is obviously aware of many of these and they have begun cracking down on some of them. Now, this is not going to be an exhaustive list. I understand that there's all sorts of these triggers out here. What we're going to talk about today is three triggers in particular. We're going to talk about the rare breed FRT-15, a trigger that we've spent a lot of time talking about, as you know from all of these videos here. We're going to talk about another trigger called the Wide Open Trigger from a company called Big Daddy Unlimited. And then we're going to talk about binary triggers. Binary triggers, I know Franklin Armory has produced. There may be some other producers of the binary trigger. Okay, the first two are the two that the ATF is absolutely positively after. The first one, of course, is the Rare Breed Forced Reset Trigger, or the uh, Rare Breed FRT-15. Now, this trigger has been the subject of a series of videos that we've done. This is a well-publicized problem. We know that Rare Breed was raided. We know that the sales records were obtained, the shipping records were obtained, and many of you around the country, otherwise lawful and responsible gun owners are already receiving visits or nasty little letters from our good friends at the ATF to talk about this trigger. So we kind of know the status of that one and we really don't need to beat that one to death. Now there is another trigger. There is another trigger that I do want you to be aware of because ATF is definitely hot to trot on this one as well. And that is the wide open trigger. Now, from a technological standpoint, I'm not really certain what the difference is between the FRT and the wide open trigger. I'm sure it's really cool technology and it absolutely is intended to increase the rate of fire. The wide open trigger was produced by a company called Big Daddy Unlimited. Now, how do I know that the wide open trigger is subject to some of this uh, scrutiny and seizure by the ATF? Well, I received a call last week from an individual who actually served as a rep for the wide open trigger. He had built out a website and his job was basically to sell the trigger both retail on his website and to get the trigger put in several retail operations. I'm not gonna name what state he's in, I'm not gonna give you his name, but that was essentially his job. He was the middleman. He was helping sell this product for Big Daddy Unlimited. He was not, I wanna make this clear, he was not employed by Big Daddy Unlimited. He was his own individual corporation working as an independent sales rep, probably repping other brands other than just Big Daddy Unlimited. So I wanna make that clear. He contacted me to let me know that three people who had purchased these wide open triggers from him, directly from his website, had now received letters and or visits from ATF agents. They were scattered throughout the country. I don't recall which state they were in, but they were basically approached and treated 
by ATF in exactly the same fashion as anyone who purchased the rare breed FRT. So it is very clear right now that the ATF has a beef with two particular triggers, and that is Rare Breeds FRT-15 and Big Daddy Unlimited's uh, Wide Open Trigger. Now, both of them were very popular items. They sold a lot of them, and yes, at the time that they were selling them, at the time you may have been purchasing them, they were lawful products to sell. They were lawful products to purchase. The ATF now has since changed their mind and now want to reclassify them as components of machine guns, and so for that reason, they are considering them to be contraband. Their beef appears to still be with the manufacturer, not so much with the consumer. Now, the third trigger, and this operates on mildly different technology from what I understand, take that for what it's worth, is the binary trigger, something that I believe Franklin Armory was the first to produce and to make available to the public, there may be other manufacturers of it. As I understand it, the binary trigger discharges one round when the trigger is depressed, and then upon releasing the trigger and the trigger resetting, a second round is then discharged. With a little bit of practice, your rate of fire can obviously increase significantly. That trigger, this is important, that trigger is not subject to ATF scrutiny. Why do I know that? I know that for two reasons. Number one, I have not had a single soul contact me yet about ATF contacting them about a binary trigger. And more importantly, there was an open letter back in March of this year to all FFLs nationwide that talked about these FRT wide open triggers and they mentioned binary triggers and they basically, as you'll see in the language here, excluded binary triggers from this scrutiny. The letter specifically stated, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, ATF, recently examined devices commonly known as forced reset triggers, FRTs, and has determined that some of them are firearms and machine guns as defined in the National Firearms Act, NFA, and machine guns as defined in the Gun Control Act, GCA. These particular FRTs are being marketed as replacement triggers for AR-type firearms. Unlike traditional triggers and binary triggers, sometimes referred to generally as FRTs, the subject FRTs do not require shooters to pull and then subsequently release the trigger to fire a second shot. Instead, these FRTs utilizing the firing cycle to eliminate the need for the shooter to release the trigger before a second shot is fired. By contrast, some aftermarket triggers have similar components but also incorporate a disconnector or similar feature to ensure that the trigger must be released before a second shot may be fired and may not be machine guns. So as you can see from this open letter from the ATF to FFLs, which was dated March 22nd of 2022, that the force reset wide open triggers, that particular technology is what the ATF is determining, believing to be machine gun in nature and therefore making it unlawful. They are specifically excluding from that at the current time, binary triggers. Now give the ATF a little bit more time. I'm sure they'll have a roundup on those as well. So currently, if you have purchased a rare breed FRT-15, if you have purchased a wide open trigger from Big Daddy. And in particular, if you purchased them on Gun Broker from a guy named Rifle Remedy 2000, rest assured you in all likelihood will receive a visit from ATF. Do you need counsel for that? That's a decision you need to make. We have done a few other videos about that. I encourage you to check those out and make a decision for yourself. Listen, in the meantime, you may have more questions about this trigger stuff or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights. And if you do, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com. Or, of course, you call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.